Bună ziua, sunteți la Decenius România. Îl aveți în față pe domnul Michael Kleiner din partea partidului Likud din Israel. Mr. Kleiner, thank you for having you here. I'm happy to be here. Um, first of all, I will start with a question from the Middle East. How would you assess uh, the dynamic of uh, security situation in the Middle East? Look, we, we are at a crossroads now. On one hand, we are ready to continue the military pressure in order to get back those uh, kidnappers, the people that Hamas kidnapped for the home, most of, many of them civilians, children, babies, and we want to make them uh, bring those uh, people back and release them. On the other hand, there is also the uh, chance of having a big agreement with Saudi Arabia, with the Arab League, and trying to find a solution for the Palestinians because we don't want to control other people. We don't need this war. We have no interest in Gaza, in Gaza. The moment Gaza will become demilitarized and uh, the moment uh, Gaza will not pose a threat on, on Israeli settlements near the border. So we don't care to run Gaza. We don't want to decide who will run Gaza. Run Gaza. We want the uh, kidnappers back and we want uh, uh, Gaza demilitarized and not being a, a threat, a military threat on Israel. And uh, how do you assess the latter escalation between Iran and Israel impacting uh, the stability in Europe and in the region? Iran is a threat for Israel, for the Arab countries in the Gulf area, Saudi Arabia, all the what's called moderate liberal Arab countries, and is a threat for Europe. You know what? It's even a threat for, for the allies of the Soviet Union. I'm, don't, I'm not sure the Russians want Iran to be nuclear. And now the, the real issue is not the exchanges between Israel and Iran. The, the issue is how to unite the world to press uh, um, Iran politically, economically, and if there's no way out military, in order to uh, put away the threat of Iran being a, a, a nuclear. What happened is maybe a warning sign for the world, because if Iran was ready to send hundreds of missiles toward Israel for, for no reason, actually. It means that you cannot trust them if uh, Iran will be able to have a nuclear weapon. Okay, and uh, do you think Europe is prepared to face this kind of threat? Uh, partially. They, there is a progress. They recognize a threat they didn't recognize in the past, maybe because what happened in Ukraine, maybe uh, uh, with what is happening in other places, and now uh, also what is happening in Iran is a warning uh, uh, from the danger posed by the red, uh, uh, green, and maybe red, green, brown coalition that is a, 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 a new version of an evil empire who want to conquer the world, who want to, uh, the, the Islam wants the world to be Islamic, the uh, communists, one new neo-communists, want to re-establish the People's uh, Republic of the World from the times of the Soviet Union. And together, uh, Europe will, has to stand with all the liberal forces, with Israel, with the United States, of course, with moderate Arab countries, and to follow, uh, de defend our values. Okay. Uh, so Europe, um, Europe has a construction from 70 years now, United Europe. Uh, do you have, can be improved, this kind of construction? Uh, not the way it is now, because they have to adopt the notion that a, a real power exists of independent nations who, are, because they are separate, are able to work together and to uh, defend the joint values. Israel, as Israeli nationalists, we have a, a common language and understanding for nationalist parties in other countries who want to protect their identity, to protect their values against uh, attacks from all, uh, all directions. Not only it can be Islam, it can be other, but uh, and, and, and I, I believe that uh, part of the Islamic world wants, we are not against Islamic, part of the uh, Islamic world wants uh, to uh, join the West, the liberal values like Saudi Arabia, like the Emirates, have a better life for the citizens and not wars all the time and not jihad and not sacrifice yourself in, uh, against an enemy real or imaginary. Uh, you talked a little uh, about uh, the um, 
assistance package by United States to Israel uh, this uh, week. Uh, how do you think uh, will impact uh, this uh, help, military help from the uh, United States for, for Israel? Of course, it's uh, renewing the uh, weapons arsenal, but more important than the arms which are necessary is a signal to the world that despite these agreements, America stands firm uh, behind Israel and the American public in the majority is not uh, represented by those uh, several thousands of students who make a, a lot of noise in the university, but the main uh, uh, mainstream of the American public opinion, including of the one of the Democratic Party, who, who understand that Israel is a bastion of the free world in a, in a dangerous area and must be helped and protected. Do you think that uh, the trust of the European people in European Parliament is uh, broken? I believe that the trust of the European public, I hope that the uh, trust of the European people uh, in the European Parliament will increase uh, after the next election in June, when parties who understand that the uh, nationality of the countries is not the enemy of the unity, uh, uh, but ex exactly the opposite. It is the cornerstone of the, uni of the unity, of the union, to have strong uh, uh, member parties, uh, nationalist member parties, who cherish the values of uh, belief in God, of tradition, of values of family. And those countries, we have. Uh, this is a common denominator between uh, the European countries and not uh, uh, some uh, vague progressive ideas who are intended to destroy those basic values of the country. If the countries are weak, the union is weak. If the countries are strong, the union is strong, and that's why I'm here with parties who want to strengthen the countries within the uh, European Union. So we are in the same boat, and we must uh, sail together in the same, same direction, you say. You know, I, I, we celebrate now in Israel Passover. Passover was the first independent state, independence day of a, of, a, of a nation, of a group of people who left a big empire and decided they want to have their unique values as a nation, not to rule other nations, but to live in peace in their own country. I guess it gave example to many European countries, to the American founders, and I believe in this we stand, we stand together because we, the same powers who threat Israel, are the powers who in a, in a little middle term, not even not long term, are threatening Europe, and you see it in France, you see it in, in Sweden, you see it in other European countries when people come and don't want to be integrated into the countries they want to join, but want to fight it, to change it, to destroy it. And this is not tolerable, not that we are against people who come and, uh, and want to be a part of our nations in Europe, in Israel. We have other peoples who are not Jews, are not uh, national French or Romanians or Dutch, and they uh, want to be integrated and are well accepted. But if they don't want to be integrated, don't want to learn the language, want to be separate, and want to fight to change from the basis of the values of the countries that host them, this is something we have to recognize and fight very strongly against. Yeah, thank you so, so, thank you so much.